Hi, it's Chester Tubwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training. In this video, we're going to look at the VBA you need to write to create charts. We'll look at how to create a chart on the same sheet as your data and a chart on a chart sheet. So this is the data I'm going to create the chart for, and I'm going to create a bar chart. And I've started the sub procedure for you by declaring three variables, one for the work for a worksheet, one for a chart, and one for a range. And so far I've set the worksheet variable to be the active sheet and I've set the range which essentially is going to be the data table for my chart as sales data. That's the name that I've given to this table. So let's start by setting this chart variable. So set ch equals, so this is how you actually create the chart. This is the code. I'm doing it within a variable because it'll make it easier later on in the code. So you can use the shapes property of the worksheet object and there's a method called add chart to. So if you're creating the chart on the same sheet as your data, you've got to use that shapes property. It's different if you're creating a chart on a, on a different sheet on a chart sheet. And then I have to say dot chart. Now, that in itself will create a chart. If I click into this data, so that's defining which data source I'm going to use, and I press play, what you'll see is it does, in fact, create the chart for me. If I was to click outside the data and play this, it would create an empty chart shape. So I'll get rid of this empty chart shape. And what I want to do is actually define the source data for my chart. So it doesn't matter where I click on the worksheet, it's always going to uh, refer to the correct uh, data source, which is essentially uh, this range here, the sales data table. So I'm going to say uh, ch dot set source data, the method there for that. And the parameter I'm going to use is source there. You can see that. And I'm just going to say DT. So now I can click anywhere in my sheet. I don't have to click into the data. I run the macro and it picks up the correct set of information for the chart. What I want to do now is talk about how to set the size of the chart. And I can do that within this add chart to method. I'm just going to get rid of dot chart for the moment. We'll put that back in in a minute. So if I open up the bracket there, you can see some of the parameters. So we're going to use the width and height parameters. And let's say width equals, let's say 300, comma, height equals, let's say 500, dot chart. Right, let's see what effect that has. I'll delete our existing chart and press play and you can see that that has changed the uh, size of the chart. What we'll do now is we'll set the position of the chart on the sheet and we can use the left and top parameters within the add chart to method and for this all you need to do is set a, a range, a cell address that the chart's going to line up to so it's for the left argument, I've just specified equals range f1.left. And for the top one, I'm going to do exactly the same, range f1. Dot top. So if I press play now, you'll see that my chart nicely lines up top left corner in cell f1. Okay, so we've created a chart, we set its size, we set its position, we set its data source. There are a lot of other things that you can do with the chart. You can decide which chart type you want, you can decide if you want a legend or not, whether you want grid lines, etc, etc. So let's look at how we do those things in code. So back to our code window. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a within statement, because there's quite a lot of things that I want to do to the chart. We've already set the 
source data. So we've got with and then end with. Okay, let's set the chart type. So there's a chart type property. And once I press equals, I get a list of all the different chart types that I can employ. You can see that in the list. Now I just want a clustered bar chart. So if I start typing that in, Excel bar clustered, that's the exact one I want. So let's see if that does the job. If I press play, you can now see I've got a bar chart in my sheet. Let's set the chart title. So I can say chart title as the property dot text equals any quotation mark sales by year. And if I press play on this, you can see now my chart has a nice little title. Next, I'm going to set data labels for my chart. And what we do for that is we use this method called set element. And then there's this huge list of elements that you can set. If you type MSO element, you can see them all there. Now the one I'm actually after is this one here, MSO element data label outside end. Now you'll see what that does. If I press play, it gives me a data label on the outside end of each bar. Okay, back to the code. Uh, I'm also going to get rid of the grid lines in my chart. And again, what we do is we use the set element method, referring again to these MSO elements. And the one I want is here, MSO element primary value grid lines none. So if I press play, now look at my chart, I have no grid lines. So there's quite a few elements that I want to set within this chart. So I'm going to go ahead and write those out and then explain them to you. Okay, so I've set, set three more elements here. I've put a legend at the top of the chart. I specified I don't want a value access because I've already got data labels, but also I want a data label for the primary category access. So if I press play, you can see that I have my legend at the top. I have a category uh, access title there, and I have no values for the uh, value access. It's not actually displaying the value access at all. We ought to think about giving this access title some text. Now we've made it visible. So that's access. And then you have to specify which access, so we Excel category text equals region. And now we have region in our access title box. Now what about actually formatting the look of the chart, the colors of the bars, etc.? Well, you can actually specify a style for your chart. These are the kind of chart styles. These each have a number. To find out which number is linked to which style, you'd have to do some recorded macros to find out the values. But I'll just put in a style within this add chart to method here. Let's say uh, style randomly selecting a style here, 280. And if I press play, you can see it's added some sort of gradient effect to the uh, bars within my chart. So you can either use those styles or you can actually specify colors for each of the bars, each of the series within your chart. So let's look at how to do that in code. Now to refer to a particular series, you can say dot series collection then you can either do this with an index number, one, two, three, etc., or name the series. So my first series is called 2016. I think it's easier to put the name in because when you read the code back, you can see 
exactly which series you're referring to. So then we can, outside the brackets, we can refer to its interior color. Interior dot color. And I'm going to put in an RGB value. I'll show you in a minute where you get these RGB values from. This is essentially the color for RGB value for red. So if I press play, you can see now that the first series has that bright red color. Now I'll show you where you get those RGB values from. If I select a series there and go to format, shape fill, more colors, custom, you can see the RGB values are there. If I select a different color, it gives me the actual values for that color. So you can use those in your VBA code. This would be the first number, second number, third number. Okay, just cancel out of this. Now I'm going to do write the code for the other series uh, for you, rather than boring you with typing them out. See you in a minute. So I've specified a color for each of my series now. If I press play, you can see those colors have been applied. Now one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of the chart area. So I'm going to say chart area dot format dot fill. This seems a very long way to get to this. For color dot RGB equals RGB and again you can put in your three numbers red, green and blue. So if I press play now uh, you can see it's changed the background color of the chart. Okay, as promised, I also want to show you how to create a chart on a chart sheet on a separate sheet. So I've produced another sub procedure here for you. And there are some differences. Uh, the main difference is in this area here. It's much simplified. So I've set the chart as charts.add2 uh, rather than all of this code which sets the height and width and everything like that for the chart. It's much simpler. And also I've specified the name of the sheet down at the bottom of the code. Now you're not going to be able to see that so let me just temporarily delete that sub procedure and there we are you can see the name of the chart I specified down there. So two differences really with well, the way in which you set the chart variable much simpler and also setting the name of the chart sheet. So if I press play now you can see it creates that chart on a separate sheet. It looks exactly the same because the rest of the code is identical. I'll put a link in the video description that will take you to a page on our website where you can get this code. Thanks very much for listening. It's been Chester Tuckwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training.